Hey, good morning, everyone. So we'll have a break after on the last one, don't worry. <laughs> but uh, today I'll just talk a little bit about um, the state of clinical trials here at UCSF. I will introduce a little bit about what a clinical trial really is. And also um, just kind of give you an overview of what's been going on, maybe, um, or why we may be turning a corner in terms of clinical trials in the next few years. All right, uh, some of the slides you may have seen last year, but I promise there's new ones because there's been new advancements. All right, so here is a kind of a diagram about what, what a clinical trial is. So a clinical trial really is a um, pre-specified research study um, that is looking at some kind of intervention in a patient group. And it's pre-specified, meaning you have to uh, design ahead of time how many patients you want to see, um, how, what kind of outcomes you want to see. So it really provides the best kind of evidence. And here you see on the bottom, the clinical trials come in different phases. There's phase one, two, three, and four. And on the left side up here is what these different phases of the clinical, oh, sorry. What these different phases of the clinical trials really are trying to address. So for example, in phase one, you're really just looking at pharmacology or how the drug interacts in your body, how your body processes the drug. Uh, phase two, you're starting to explore therapeutics. You're starting to see if the drug is really doing what it's supposed to be doing in your body. In phase three, you're starting to look at uh, confirming the efficacy. So you're really looking to see, is this drug making the patient better? Is it making the memory better? Is it making the patient walk better? Things like that. And after phase three, if everything is good, then the drug can be sent to the FDA for approval. But the studies continue, and it's called phase four, where now that the drug is being used in a large number of people, we continue to collect safety data to make sure the drug is safe. But what I like about this picture is that you can see that not all the phases are so clearly defined, and these explorations continue throughout phase one, two, three, and four. All right, just a quick reminder that Alzheimer's, of course, is a neurodegenerative brain disease. Your brain shrinks, but under the microscope, with, with Alzheimer's, you'll see uh, pathology that involves amyloid plaques and also neurofibrillary tangles made up of this tau protein. All right, this is a depressing slide, but over the last decade or so, you can see that there's been a lot of investigational drugs, a lot of clinical trials, and they all failed. But if you look at the bottom, as we're starting to move towards more targeted therapy, these anti-amyloid antibodies, we're starting to see there's maybe a signal somewhere. So what are we seeing? Oh, so first of all, all of these clinical trials in the past have kind of been in the later stages of dementia, in the, uh, when people are already having significant symptoms and significant difficulties in their daily life. So what were these uh, clinical trials seeing? All right, so this is a study from a drug called selenezumab, and they, the trial failed, but the company went back, and they actually looked at um, a subgroup of patients, only those patients with mild Alzheimer's disease, and they pulled all of them together, and um, when we looked at that, you can see on the chart on the left right here, um, the people on the blue were initially uh, taking placebo, the people on the red were on the drug, and this is a memory test, and actually the higher you get, the poorer you do, so the going up is bad, okay? So when they took only the people with mild Alzheimer's disease and put them all together and looked at them, the people on drug actually did a little bit better. And then, as you see, uh, when the blue line ends and turns into red is when these, the clinical trial ended and the patients on placebo were given the drug as an open label extension. And you can see that as time continues, the people who initially received the drug still did a little bit better than the people who later on got the drug. This is called a delayed start design, and it kind of, it's, it adds a little bit of evidence, it's not great, but it adds a little bit of evidence that maybe the drug has done something significant to the disease course that even though people later on got the drug, they just can't catch up. So it somehow altered the disease course a little bit. Of course, there's other problems with this kind of analysis, but it does offer a little glimmer of hope. And this is why this company that's responsible for this clinical trial has moved on with this drug, even though this initial trial failed, and they have now, um, have an ongoing clinical trial with only mild Alzheimer's disease that is already in phase three and then they already finished recruiting all their patients and the patients are being followed and we should have results in about two, three, four years. All right, and the same story can actually be seen in other anti-amyloid antibody clinical trials and those companies are moving forward with studying these kind of treatments in um, mild Alzheimer's disease as well. So why 
do we think that maybe it only works in mild Alzheimer's disease? Well, this is an um, important chart where you see the line over there that says zero. Uh, this, this study was done in people with a genetic form of Alzheimer's disease, so they actually have a pretty good idea of when the disease will start in these people based on their family history. And so on the line zero here is when they think the disease will start, and of course some patients are younger and they don't, they're not at that age yet, and they looked at a bunch of what we call biomarkers. You know, these could be PET scans, CSF studies, brain volume. And they're starting to see that some of these pathological changes, like the amyloid beta, which is in the orange line right here, actually starts to increase in the brain well before any symptoms can start, sometimes 10, 15 years before. And even some of the brain volume changes or the tau in the brain can start changing well before the symptom. So the thought is that at least with the anti-amyloid antibody trials, in the past that maybe it was just too late. Maybe it should be given earlier before some of these pathological changes have really taken effect. So now a lot of Alzheimer's clinical trials are starting earlier. They're starting in the MCI stage, and some of them are even starting even earlier before patients have any sort of symptoms to try to prevent anything from happening. One of these uh, important clinical trials is called the A4 study. Uh, some of you may be a part of that here. And it's really looking at people with no symptoms whatsoever. They're healthy, they have no memory problems, and they um, make sure they have amyloid in the brain, and they give them an anti-amyloid drug and follow them for years and then see how they do. Okay, so this clinical trial is ongoing. Another re possible reason that the past clinical trials have been negative is they went back and used this amyloid PET scan to look at the patients who participated in the trial, and they actually found that up to 20% of these patients don't even have amyloid. They don't even have Alzheimer's disease. So you can imagine what that can do to your results. And so now that we have these PET scans that can look at amyloid in the living person, we'll be better able to identify who should be in these trials and who should not. And we can also do that with um, cerebral spinal fluid studies where we can look at the amyloid protein and tau in the CSF. And this is why we put some of you through these difficult procedures. Another new thing that's just come out recently is that now we're able to use PET scans to look at the tau protein. Uh, this is hot off the press, just published. You can see going from left to right are people with no symptoms whatsoever to mild symptoms to full-blown Alzheimer's disease. And you can see that the tau really correlates well with disease severity, and now we can finally see it in um, a living person without having to, to do autopsy. This is still in research phases and not in clinical um, use yet, but we're, very, we're quite hopeful of it. All right, and last thing we're gonna do, a lot of the studies have been focusing on amyloid, but what about tau? So tau, you can think of as a, it's a naturally occurring protein in the neuron that helps stabilize microtubules, which is like a freeway structure in the neuron that helps give, it, uh, give the neuron structure, but the neuron can also use it as a highway to transport goods up and down. When tau becomes abnormal, it kind of um, separates from the microtubule and can cause the microtubule to degrade. Okay. So now we have drugs that can help restore this, help restore this function and help restore the microtubules. And uh, that's one, one of the ways we're attacking um, the Alzheimer's through attacking tau. Other one is we're starting to learn that um, tau, the abnormal tau protein, when they start uh, becoming abnormal, they can actually travel from cell to cell and propagate itself like that. And now we've developed antibodies that can suck up these tau proteins as they're going from cell to cell. And on the bottom, you see slides from mouse with um, abnormal tau. You see on the left, there's a lot of little black spots of toxic tau. But after given this antibody, it really clears up quite significantly. And this, these antibodies have now finally entered into human studies, uh, not in Alzheimer's, but in a different disease. But uh, rest assured, the companies are planning, uh, have more plans for these tau antibodies. And of course, some of you may have read the recent Time article uh, about a few weeks ago about other new ideas for Alzheimer's treatment. One of these came from Stanford, where they're looking at pathways that may be responsible for damage um, after the amyloid is starting to cause wreak havoc in the brain and um, drugs to stop it. And there's other, lots of other new ideas. Uh, a lot of them are in preclinical and uh, animal study phases or early phase one stage, stages. All right, this is just a list of um, clinical trials that are currently available at UCSF. Um, 
The first one is what we talked about, where people with no memory problems can participate and see if we can prevent Alzheimer's. We have three clinical trials for Alzheimer's disease right now, but there will be more to come in the spring. PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy, is a disease that is really um, almost always caused by tau, and it's an excellent model to study tau therapies, as you can see why there's, oops. Oh, well, okay, I should end anyway, but, uh, Emma Hare, one of our research coordinators out in the lobby, and she has information on all these clinical trials if you're interested in, and we have um, pamphlets for these clinical trials as well. Thank you.